Hey guys, it's Rob from What You Don't Know. This is week 33 from August 15th to the 21st, and it covers everything from the Battle of Britain to the Battle of the Yarmouk. I hope you enjoy. On August 15, 778, Charlemagne, who is regarded as the father of Europe, suffered the only significant defeat in his otherwise successful military career at the hands of Lupo II of Gascony. This occurred at the Battle of Roncevaux Pass, which saw a large force of Basques ambush a part of Charlemagne's army in Roncevaux Pass, a high mountain pass in the Pyrenees, on the present border between France and Spain. This occurred after Charlemagne's invasion of the Iberian Peninsula. The Basque attack was in retaliation for Charlemagne's destruction of the city walls of their capital, Pamplona. Never again would Charlemagne take it upon himself to lead an army to battle in Spain, having to rely instead on his generals for future campaigns in the Iberian Peninsula. On August 16, 1929, a 17-year-old Sephardic Jew named Abraham Mizrahi was fatally stabbed by an Arab in the Maccabee grounds near Meisharim. Subsequently, a Jewish crowd attacked and severely wounded the policeman who arrived to arrest the Arab responsible, and then attacked and burned neighboring Arab tents and shacks, and wounded their occupants. The list of the wounded included an Arab youth named Ali Abdallah Hassan, who was chosen at random to be stabbed in retaliation. This led to further events that have become known as the 1929 Palestine Riots. In the meta-narrative of Zionism, according to Michel Campos, the event became a central symbol of Jewish persecution at the hands of bloodthirsty Arabs and was engraved in the national psyche of Israeli Jews, particularly in those who settled in Hebron after 1967. During the riots, 133 Jews and 116 plus Arabs lost their lives and hundreds more were injured. Sadly, there is still conflict between these two nations over 90 years later today. On August 17, 1808, the Battle of Alavis took place in the vicinity of the town of Alavis as part of the Finnish War. The Finnish army, under the command of General Karl Johan Alderkrutz, defeated a smaller Russian force and drove it southwards. It was the last in a string of Swedish successes during the summer of 1808 and marked the turning point in the war. And I am mentioning Sweden and Finland, as Finland was a part of the Kingdom of Sweden at the time. As a result of the war, the eastern third of Sweden was established as the autonomous Grand Duchy of Finland within the Russian Empire. Alderkrutz ordered the 3rd Battalion of the Savalax Infantry Regiment, supported by the 2nd Battalion, to counterattack. After a barrage of gunfire, the battalion made a bayonet charge and threw back the Russians. The Russian left flank was also under pressure and started yielding. By 1900, the entire Russian force had been retired, with casualties tallying 370 men compared to 200 on the Swedish side. On August 18, 1940, an air battle known as the Hardest Day was fought during the Battle of Britain between the German Luftwaffe and the British RAF. On that day, the Luftwaffe made an all-out effort to destroy the RAF Fighter Command. The air battles that took place on that day were amongst the largest aerial engagements in history up to that time. Both sides suffered heavy losses. In the air, the British shot down twice as many Luftwaffe aircraft as they lost, However, many RAF aircraft were destroyed on the ground, equalizing the total losses on both sides. Both sides lost more aircraft combined on this day than at any other point during the campaign. For this reason, Sunday the 18th of August 1940 became known as the hardest day in Britain. Losses included 56 aircraft destroyed and 62 damaged on the British side, and 71 aircraft destroyed and 31 damaged on the German side. German loss of life was significantly higher at 94 killed to the British 10. On August 19, 1812, the USS Constitution met the HMS Guerriere on a naval battle during the War of 1812. The battle took place 400 miles southeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia. The Constitution was captained by Captain Isaac Hull and the Guerriere by Captain James Richard Dakers. When the two ships encountered each other, Guerriere's captain engaged confident of victory against a larger, better-armed U.S. ship. The exchange of broadsides felled Guerriere's mast and reduced the ship to a sinking condition. Constitution's crew took the British sailors on board and set the Guerriere on fire, then returned to Boston with news of the victory, which proved to be important for American morale. Although the battle was arguably inconsequential from a military perspective, as the loss of the Guerriere was insignificant to the 600-ship Royal Navy, it was one of the pivotal moments in American history. On August 20, 636, the Battle of the Yarmouk concluded with a Rashid and Caliphate victory. It was a major battle between the army of the Byzantine Empire and the Muslim forces of the Rashidun Caliphate. The battle consisted of a series of engagements that lasted for six days in August of 636, near the Yarmouk River. The result of the battle was a complete Muslim victory that ended Byzantine rule in Syria. The Battle of the Yarmouk is regarded as one of the most decisive battles in military history, and it marked the first great wave of early Muslim conquest after the death of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. This heralded the rapid advance of Islam into the then-Christian Levant. The battle is widely regarded to be Khalid bin al-Walid's greatest military victory and cemented his reputation as one of the greatest tacticians and cavalry commanders in history. 
The Arab army consisted of 25 to 40,000 men and lost 1,000 soldiers, whereas the Byzantine army consisted of 100 to 150,000 troops and lost 50 to 70,000 men. On August 21, 1918, the Second Battle of the Somme started during the First World War and took place as part of the Hundred Days Offensive by the Allies. It was a part of a series of successful counteroffensives in response to the German Spring Offensive of 1918 after a pause for redeployment and supply. The battle formed the central part of the Allies' advance to the Armistice of November 11th. On the 21st of August, both the Third Battle of Albert and the Second Battle of Bapont opened, kicking off the Somme Offensive. Albert was captured on the 22nd of August, and Bapont was captured on the 29th of August. The offensive was fought by a collection of British, Canadian, Australian, and U.S. forces against Erich Ludendorff's Second German Army, and was an Allied victory. The battle sound from Field Marshal Douglas Haig, refusing demands from Supreme Allied Commander Marshal Ferdinand Falk to continue the Amiens offensive, and instead start a fresh offensive towards a different sector of the Western Front. Thank you for watching this week's compilation on what you don't know. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more.